So the testing continues. Today I brought out my Firebox Freestyle, the complete kit, because I need all the components to make the Bushcraft 8 and the Fire Pit 8. And I'm going to use one of those to make my lunch with, and the other one just to sit around and enjoy. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, as you can see, the temperatures have warmed up here in this mid-March afternoon. I had to take off my wool jacket. I'm wishing I'd brought out some lighter clothing. But uh, like I said, I've been collecting up some firewood and now I'm ready to make my lunch. So what I'm gonna do is go right down to the ground, show you how the Bushcraft 8 is assembled from two individual Firebox Freestyle stoves. I'll get a fire linen in it and I'm going to could be cooking some lunch which will appear in another video and once my lunch is cooked then I'm going to reassemble the stove into the fire pit 8 so I can put my pot on for some uh, coffee. All right so instead of giving you specs and all that type of thing that's all in that original preview video let's get down to the ground and get started. All right, I'm going to try my best to give you the detail necessary to see how the two stoves go together. I'll tell you, Steve does an excellent job of it, and Steve tells me that he is also making an instructional video that will give you all the detail you need to see uh, for the steps-by-steps. Steps. He says it goes together like magic, and it really is very simple once you understand. So I'll start by getting the two kits out, put the bag aside. So I need the full two kits in order to make this, but I don't need all of the components inside of each kit. So what I won't be using is the grates for either of them, so I'll take those out. I will be using the fire sticks, but maybe not all of them as you'll see. Take the ranger band off, put that aside. So that's one stove. I will also be using the boxes or the ash pans that they come in because I need those to have underneath the stove. So open up the other one so I can get the other stove out. Same thing, I won't be needing the grates that come with the individual stoves, but I will keep the fire sticks, get rid of the ranger band. Okay, I'm putting the sticks aside for a moment. Now, I don't think, I, well, I haven't pointed this out, but each of the stoves, the panels themselves are marked so that you can differentiate them and help you put them together. I'll show you closely, hopefully it'll show up. Can you see that there's a single hole on that panel? If I open it up, you'll see the next panel has two holes, three holes, and four holes. So when you read the instructions that come with your freestyle, you'll know which panels that are being referred to. In order to put the eight-sided configurations together, you're going to remove the pin or the leg from the panel one where it connects to panel two. Pull it out and set it aside. Now, step here is open up panel one and just set it down for a second. Pick up the other stove, pull out the same pin, the one that goes between panel one, panel two, open it up. Now this time, instead of laying it down the same way you laid down the first one, flip it over so that the panel one is over laying against panel two of the other stove. It can be a little awkward when you're first doing this on the ground. Helps if you have a level surface to work on. And of course I don't, I'm in the woods. Now I'll take my pin, re-put it in to that one. Same thing on the other one. If I can pick it up with my fingers. Put it back in and that's it. I now have all eight sides put together and I'll be able to set up the stove. So in this configuration, once I put the grate in, this is the Bushcraft 6. I'll talk more about that in a second. If I wanted to create the fire, or not Bushcraft 6, Bushcraft 8, because I'm using all eight sides, all eight panels. If I want to create the fire pit 8, it's simply a matter of pulling it into an octagon shape not hexagon mark, octagon, and then putting some pins. I'll show you more about how you put the fire sticks in to hold the grate up in a few minutes time when I get to that point. And then I'm ready for that. Now, the reason I am going to be using, you can see I've got some unlevel ground here. Actually, let's finish putting this together first. So take four of your fire sticks, grab them all here. Grab four of the fire sticks, 
find four of the slots along the bottom, cross them through. There is not an exact right or wrong. I like to just kind of space them out the best I can. And that should do the trick. All right, so they are laid out. Now, remember, this is not the grate you'll have in your complete kit. This one is uh, one of the pre-production models. The one that you'll get will fit both the Bushcraft 6 and the, and the Bushcraft 8, but that's not what they had to send me at the time. Then all I have to do is drop it in. Now, the stove is assembled. There is the complete stove sitting in the ash pan. I can do a little bit better job of lining that up and ready to go. So why am I choosing to use the Bushcraft 8 to cook my lunch in? Well, here's the pot that I'm going to be ma use, making my lunch in. I will put a couple of the fire sticks across for support. This is a 14 centimeter zebra billy pot. And of course, you know that they are available from uh, Firebox Stove as well. I thought, you can see it's brand new. No, Steve did not send me this one. This one I purchased on my own. But uh, uh, I do have others that were sent to me from Firebox Stove, actually purchased from Firebox Stove. This one I purchased on my own. It is brand new. It's the first time I've used it, and I thought it would just go together well with the Freestyle Stove. So here's the reason why I'm going to be using it. Uh, I want to be able to control the heat because although I will be looking to boil, at the beginning, the lunch that I'll be making, I'll speak more to that in a moment, then I want to take it down to a simmer. With the fire pits, or not the fire pit, but the Bushcraft 6 configuration, I should have more control over that. I have not tried this yet, so it'll be an experiment. We'll see whether or not it works. But what I hope to do is create the fire inside and bring my water to a boil as I need to, and then when I want to move it down to a simmer, I can move most of the coals to one end, move the pot down to the other end. So I should be able to find the right place somewhere over top of the fire to give me the heat that I need. Alternatively, I could be doing two things at once. I mean, this is big enough to hold two of these 14 centimeter pots, but uh, I only need to make my lunch in this one pot. Okay, obviously the next thing for me to do is to get the fuel together I need in order to start a fire. So I have everything I need to get my fire started. And you know, I have mentioned in other videos that just how quickly the firebox freestyle lights up. And in large part, that's due to the wide open grate that's inside of here. As you'll see, this thing will catch on very, very quickly. Of course, the downside of that is that means all that excessive airflow can be a challenge if you're trying to create a bed of coals. And we'll talk more about that in a little while. Uh, I did speak to Steve about that, and Steve said it was all a matter of weight. Rather than trying to mill out a plate with just the right amount of airflow and adding significantly weight to this intended to be lightweight stove, he went with the grate, and he advises and recommends learning how to create large coals or create coals, and I, very much the way I do it as well, which is to get your fire started and then add on larger pieces of wood. Steve also suggests that you could start out by laying in a bed of wood in the bottom if you're trying to uh, get uh, coals going and build your fire on the bed of wood. So a half top-down burn. Maybe you could complete top-down burn. Why don't I try that? Why don't I put in a couple of pieces of wood at one end of the stove. I am going to start the fire at the other end of the stove. So the pieces of wood I put in are literally, yeah, half the size of the stove. So we're going to give that a try today. I have some other ideas I'll share in future videos. But yeah, let's get this thing started. So I always like to start with birch bark because I have it. And... I have a review coming out finally for the Survive Outdoors Longer uh, Fuel-Free Plasma Lighter is the term most often used for this. And as I've said before, when you use birch bark and you follow it up with spruce twigs, it's going to be smoky. And a lot of flame, at least to get started. So right away, in using the, the Bushcraft 8, it's uh, a lot like using the Bushcraft 6, except larger, um, you can put in longer pieces of fuel. Now, I could have done this, this differently now that I look at it. I, I failed to take into account that the breeze is moving in this direction. 
Had I been thinking a little bit more clearly or pre-thought it out, I would have started the fire in this end of the stove to take advantage of the breeze running through the stove in order to have the fire move down through the fuel. I mean, it's going to do so anyway. As you can see, it's doing it all by itself. But if you want it to go a little faster, that would be the way to do it. And you can see I do have a lot of flame, as I said. Most of that is the birch bark right now. That'll die down in a minute. But while it is providing all that heat, I can start adding on all the other fuel on this damp mid-March day. You can see how damp it is with the smoke. It's not really damp, it's just a little bit damp, but the heat really helps to dry it out and get it ignited. So I can save the other birch bark that I have for the second setup, which will come later in the video, and that is where I build the fire pit eight, the eight-sided octagon, yes, octagon fire pit. All right, the fire is moving in this direction through the stove. I had kind of pushed the fuel that way a little bit, so that's pretty much what I wanted. I think you can see now the fire is caught on very quickly. I'll be interested to see what happens in terms of building the coals at one end of the stove. And that'll be my control end for the slower cooking that I need to do with this dinner that I'm uh, building. So I have a fair amount of fuel sitting here, some splits, some bran dead branches. I'm waiting now for the fuel to really get going, create some, uh, some coals, and then I'll get my lunch on. And when I'm cooking my lunch, that's when I'll bring you back. All right, I think this was a good call, having the fire pit eight for this. You can see I've got flame down at this end, not so much at this end. That way I can reduce the amount of heat underneath the pot. If I want to increase the sizzle, put it directly over the flame for a second. That has been sizzling long enough. All right, next step. Well, I can tell you that using the freestyle in the Bushcraft 8 configuration was ideal for doing the type of cooking I just did in that one pot meal. I was able to move it back and forth just the way I had hoped. Uh, following Steve's advice, I had had a couple of big chunks of wood like this, that size chunks of wood down in one end and they gave me a much slower burn down there. So when I needed to bring it off the heat, I went down to that end. That worked out great. Uh, now what I'm doing is I'm going to switch it into the fire pit pit eight configuration. Uh, the only reason I'm doing that, one is to demonstrate it, and two is I need a quick boil up of some water so that I can do my dishes and make some coffee. And I want to demonstrate how the switchover is made. Not a lot of work to that. There's one little trick that I'll share with you now. So cold enough? It is cold enough. So I'm going to pull out my pins because I'm going to need four pins for this or four fire sticks, sorry. I will drop my fire grate out of the stove. And you can see how much ash did collect down inside of the, uh, the ash pan. So it's important to have those there, unless you happen to be on mineral soil. Okay, so take a fire pin. I like to start with panel number four. Panel number four is the one that has the fold down damper on it. Right at the bottom, go across between those two uh, holes there. Come around, skip one panel, do the same thing, same holes. Come around, skip a panel, do the same thing, same holes. Now here's where things get a little tricky. The thing is starting to get rigid and it is supposed to, that's intentional. And you want to be able to get the last fire stick in. It may take a little manipulation, uh, but if you follow that sequence of so going around in a circle, it's pretty good. Now you can see it's pretty solid. Now let me just clean out, not clean out so much, line those things back up. All right, here we go. So you can see, I think there might be a better way of using the boxes. Let's try this. Yeah, I think that's better. Much better, in fact, okay. So they just, I mean, just fit. I think, in fact, you have to have the legs turned in 
at the outside edges if you want everything to go inside of the two ash pans like that. Only thing left now, drop the ring in or drop the, the 10 inch fire grate in and I'm ready to build another fire. So, dirty hands, let's get it going. As I said, all I'm trying to do now is boil up some water for my, do my dishes and make some coffee. Or make some coffee and do my dishes. Depends on which way you look at it, right? Ah, uh, birch bark. Not a lot of good birch bark left. I have to go searching. Uh, this will work, though. This should work. Lay the birch bark in. Don't go out. Catch on to the rest. Should have taken a second to break this down a little bit more and get a little bit more uh, surface area for the birch bark, but it'll work. As long as I don't let it go out. I think I'm just going to wait a second before I add my tinder on. Because this birch bark is a little reluctant to go. Are you going to go? Not easily. This is a step you can't rush. You just have to take your time to do this. Otherwise, you're just going to slow yourself down like I just did, having to start over again. See if I can get some better stuff. See what I'm using? It's old, hard birch bark, so... You have to kind of try and peel off the layers to get down to some of the finer stuff. There we go. There's some nice stuff. What did they say? Never enough time to do it right the first time. Always enough time to do it right the second time. Now let's see if we can't get it lit properly. Still not great birch bark, but at least I've got more surface area. There you go, birch bark. That's a little bit better. Thank you. Man, this stuff is like leather. It'll still burn, it's just you can't get that fine surface out of it. Okay, now we're going. Another small handful of spruce twigs from the closest to the tree, as dry as I can get it. A lot of smoke, a lot of heat, a lot of flame too. Right on top of that, I can start throwing these small little pieces of dead maple. Man, this freestyle takes off in a hurry. Woo! Lean back, Mark. It'll die back in a second, though. By that time, I'll be able to put in my fuel or some larger kindling, small fuel. And somewhere I have my long fire sticks. There must be still in the uh, envelope there. So that I can span the stove so I can put a pot on. Optionally, I could use one of my grates to do that. And I may do that too. I may use one of the grates. Okay. Uh, give me a few minutes when the fire is more established. I'll come back and I'll show you the pot on the fire. So the notches at the top of the stove are enlarged slightly for a reason. That allows you to come at the stove with your long fire sticks at an angle and, and they won't jam in those notches. So a little bit larger than a uh, the notch needs to be, but much appreciated. 
Maybe I should put my glasses on, see what I'm doing here. All right, that's better. So you can see I, I build up the, fl the fire and I'm letting it die down just a little bit. In doing this, what I can do is I can very carefully put the fire sticks in. This is their maximum extension. This is the widest part of the stove that I'm doing right now. And uh, so if I went at an angle, I'd actually have a little bit more length than I need it. All right, there we go. Now I can put the pot right in the center and I can build the fire back up. I'm not going to build it up too high because all I'm trying to do now, as I mentioned, is get some water on to make coffee with, and I don't need a whole lot of fire just to do that. So I don't know if you're noticing the size of the sticks that I'm throwing in. These are seven, eight inches, but I've been putting in some, now well, that's 12, 13 inches. Where's something else I've been putting in there? 10, 11 inch sticks. Um, it's a 10 inch, di uh, not diameter, well I guess it is diameter across. So you can get in some longer pieces of wood and not have to process your wood down. You can get in some huge chunks of wood. In fact, the huger the better, or the, the larger the better. You don't have to take them down to a small size like that. Get it going, yes, but once it's going, unless you're just trying to maintain a small flame in a local area, you can get a roaring fire going in this fire pit by adding in larger pieces of wood and they will go for an extended period of time. This really is a portable campfire in many ways. It's a portable campfire. I have tried it at home with a Dutch oven. It will support the Dutch oven quite readily. It does not uh, appear that it's going to block airflow and of course you do have the two dampers as well on either the one on either side. They actually make it easier as well to put in wood but it doesn't look like it'd be a problem. Uh, I have a Dutch oven as well, and I actually have a pressure cooker that I've yet to review that I think this may be the stove I use with the pressure cooker. We'll see. But you can see it is a big fire pit. This is a campfire. So this is when you've done all your cooking, you've done everything you need for the day, and now you just want to settle down to a nice warming fire. This is the one to have. Not that you can't cook over it. It's just, uh, it's actually bigger than most people will need for most of their cooking. All right, basically this is all there is left to show you was this fire pit eight configuration. I'm gonna wait on my water now so I can make some coffee, do my dishes up, and uh, then we'll wrap this video up. All right, well this has been a full day of testing with the uh, Firebox Freestyle. I've had uh, it set up in the Bushcraft eight configuration and in the fire pit eight configuration. I cook my lunch with, in a single pot and that'll come out under another video. Uh, yeah, it's worked out exactly the way I had hoped it would. It, why wouldn't it though? Of course, it's just a larger version of the Bushcraft 6 and the Fire Pit 6. You can get more on it. You can get a larger fire going. That's the advantages of the larger configurations for this stove. I hope you were able to see what I did in taking the two stoves and putting them together to get them to uh, made up properly. It's once you understand the principle and it's clearly laid out in that little pamphlet that comes with the stoves on how to do that. Once you understand the principle, it's like Steve says, it's just magic. They go together so well designed from that point of view. There were a couple of questions that people had asked about the freestyle stoves. One is, can you put all the sides together and then fold it down flat so it'll go in your backpack? You can with the six. In fact, with when you put the six-sided configurations, it'll fold up and go in one of the, the ash pan slash boxes that you, you get with it. Uh, so that works out well. There's still room and despair in there. With the eight, you can't fold it completely fat, like you can't accordion it down to one size. You can accordion it down, at least I haven't figured out how to do it, so that it's like this, so that you have uh, four panels on top of each other, but side by side. So still very compact, you just won't be able to get it into the box, the, the, the um, ash pan box. You'll have to have another way of carrying it. It'll still give you, you know, a lot more room in your pack. You don't have to leave it fully assembled the way you see them now in, in use they'll work out fine as far as uh, you know folding them down you'll still be able to get them in your pack i guess the answer a couple of other questions people have asked is what about using them with alcohol what about using them with wood pellets what about using them with charcoal 
Is there any other way of slowing the burn down so you can get more grilling coals? So I have been working with all of these. I have been taking suggestions from people who have put comments or suggestions in the comment section. And I've come up with some of my own ideas. So I will be coming back and soon enough with uh, all those things. And I think at that point, I should have enough experience to give you a more complete review. Although you, you're seeing most of it as I do it, most of my testing. This is the type of testing I would normally do off camera instead of making videos on. But uh, at this point, I think my personal feeling is that I will appreciate when my single stove and titanium comes because that'll be the one I'll use most often because most of what I do in the woods are boil ups and I don't necessarily uh, cook huge meals. Those times that I need a larger stove to cook a larger, well, to cook a meal, a bigger meal, then I likely will use either the Bushcraft 6 or maybe the Fire Pit 6. I'll pre-assemble it at home. I'll take only the components I need. And uh, yeah, then that's the way I'll use it. Uh, I think I need to leave it to you at this point. What more questions you have? What comments do you have? I know this is all new and uh, there's a lot to be said about this. And people have some very valid questions, especially about airflow. And Steve addresses that and I will be addressing it further as I go along. Okay. I think we can, we've, uh, can probably call it enough for this video. If you have any comments, any questions, please put them in the comments section below. If you have any suggestions, put those in the comments section below. If you have any ideas for future videos, put those in the comments section below. Until next time, get out and explore. Take that path, let's travel, because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.